Hi, my name is Dale Washington, and I would like to um, talk with you all and, and share with you um, a dream and also a warning that I received from God on uh, July 9th of 2016. Um, and before I get started, I would just want to tell you just a little bit about myself. Um, as I said, my name is Dale Washington. I've been positioned in the body of Christ by God as a teacher with a prophetic anointing, and I prophesy through dreams and visions. Um, on July 9th, the morning of July 9th, I received the dream, as I said, from God. I'm not going to go into the dream because you would not understand the dream at all. Um, however, I did seek God for the interpretation of the dream. He gave me the interpretation, um, and it turned out to be a warning um, for the people of Florida. So I'm going to get into that. Um, I wrote some things down because I wanted to not leave anything out. I wanted to give you everything that God gave me, and because this is... Um, this is very new for me to be making a video, um, and I'm a little bit nervous about it. Um, bear with me, and I'm going to make sure I give you um, the word of the Lord that he gave to me to give to, to the people. Okay. Um, God showed me, uh, as I saw him for an in interpretation of what I was seeing, um, God showed me the state of Florida um, is about to be hit with what is called a nuclear tide, a nuclear tide. Um, the best way that I can explain a nuclear tide to you is to tell you that um, it would be similar to a nuclear explosion, but on a massive scale. Um, and, and what God is saying to the people of Florida is to get right with God and do it now. Um, when I received the dream and when I first realized what God was speaking to me about and what I had been seeing in, in the dream, um, I was just in disbelief. Um, and also I wanted to be 100% sure that God was showing me what I knew that what I thought I was seeing, but I just, I needed to be sure before I could share this. I wanted to uh, know which direction God wanted me to go. What did he want me to do with the information um, that he gave me? Um, and through prayer and seeking his face, he did let me know that he wanted me to go on to social media and tell the people what he said concerning Florida and to give the warning um, because um, this thing is soon to come. It, is, 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 it can happen, happen at any day now. Um, one of the first things that God told me about Florida, he said that Florida was in a den. And when God spoke that to me, I had no idea what he meant. Now, this was after the, the dream on July 9th. Um, he said, Florida is in a den. And I said, a den, what, what kind of den? Uh, you know, my mind is going crazy. I'm like a, a lion's den. And I got up to go type the word den in on my phone to see if there was another meaning for the word den that I wasn't already aware of. And I heard God speak to me. He said, Florida is in a den of iniquity. So the warning um, that God is saying is, there's a nuclear tide that's about to hit Florida any day now. God did not give me a particular area of Florida. He didn't give me a particular city, a particular town, or a particular region. He just simply said Florida. God also let me know that Florida is an open door. Florida, in other words, God says, has no doors. Because Florida is an open door to every kind of sin and iniquity, Florida is open to great danger and great destruction. Florida is open to disaster. Florida is open to attacks. 
Florida is open to any and everything that wants to come in. Florida has no doors. This is gonna be a cataclysmic event. The world as we know it will never be the same again. Okay, so also um, God showed me that there was going to be, with this uh, nuclear tide, there's going to be burning and ashes and a massive, uh, a massive amount or a massive number of lives is going to be lost. So God is saying to, to Florida, to the people of Florida, to get right with him, to turn to him right now. Tomorrow may be too late. Um, in the dream, I did, I can't, I did notice that, um, well, I have reason to believe that the nuclear tide that's about to hit Florida, as I said, can be any day now. But I have reason to believe that it could be as soon as the month of August. And I do want to make this clear. God did not give me a year. Um, but I have reason to believe that it is going to be the month of August. And although God did not give me a year, I happen to personally feel because of things I saw in the dream and the things that I felt in the dream, I feel like this could happen as soon as this summer, August of this year. I'm talking about 2016. And I, I, I partly say that because the this thing that is about to hit Florida, this thing has a breath. And I don't know how to explain that to you, but in the dream, this thing had a breath and I could feel the breath of this thing so close in my face. And I know that this is about to happen any day now. So I want to give you uh, some, some scriptures um, that God gave, gave to me to give to the people. Um, I wanna make sure I don't miss anything. So I'm, I'm gonna be looking at my paper from, from time to time. Um, Okay, so th that came from the first dream, the, the warning that I just shared with you um, about the nuclear tide, about the ashes, about the burning um, came from, from the first dream. Um, as I continue to pray and to seek the face of God and cry out to God in disbelief of what I was seeing and what he was telling me, um, I had a, a sometime after July 9th, a few days later, I had a second dream. And I am going to share the second dream with you, and I'm going to give you the interpretation of the second dream that God revealed to me as I sought him about it. So in the second dream, I was um, sweeping the floor. And I was very, very involved in sweeping the floor. Um, and I was hurrying. I was, I was sort of like in a rush to hurry up and, and get the floor swept. And, and as I was sweeping the floor, I, I could remember looking up at the wall, glancing at a clock. Um, there was a clock on the wall, um, just as this clock is here. I don't know, if, I hope you can see it clearly, but there was a clock on the wall and the clock had um, somewhere like almost 540 in the evening, let's say 20 minutes, about 20 minutes to six. And uh, as I was sweeping, I remember that I, I, stopped, I stopped sweeping and then I, I went to um, the back door and I saw a, a maintenance worker outside the back door. And I called out to tell the maintenance worker that I needed a light bulb. And I was saying, I already have a, a light bulb, but I need another light bulb. And the maintenance worker called out and said, go to the store and get them from where they sell them at. And then I remember being uh, back in the house, sweeping again, sweeping again, trying to hurry up and sweep. And I was rushing because I realized that I had to hurry up and get to the daycare because I had a child in daycare. And as I kept glancing at the clock and sweeping, I realized I said, okay, um, it's 20 minutes to six. The daycare is going to close at six o'clock. And I got to hurry up and get to the daycare and pick up my child because I have a child at daycare. Um, one part I forgot to, to mention, when I looked out 
the back door to call to the maintenance worker to ask for uh, a light a light bulb i saw people out in the the back of the apartment buildings um they were inspectors and they were on their way to begin to inspect people's apartments and so i remember coming back after seeing that and as, after asking for the light bulb and i was sweeping and i was looking at the clock and i was saying to myself i gotta hurry up and get to the daycare daycare is getting ready to close it's almost six o'clock i gotta go get my child from daycare and now all of this is in the dream and i was thinking that um i gotta hurry up and get my child because for some reason in the dream the inspectors that i saw out back um, about to inspect apartments. They were also going to be inspecting the daycare. And I knew in, in the dream, I knew that the inspectors were going to harm the children that were at daycare. And so because daycare was about to close, I was saying to myself in the dream, it's gonna be easy for the inspectors to have access to the children and they're going to be able to harm the children because not too many people are going to be around because it's going to be all almost closing time. It's going to it's almost six o'clock. I got to hurry and get and, and get and pick up my child. Now, in the natural, I do not have a child in daycare. So um, I'm going to tell you what the interpretation of the dream is about the daycare. And I'm going to give you the scriptures that uh, God gave me about uh, the dream at the daycare. I'm going to try to start with uh, what is called the sixth hour. In the dream, just like this clock, if you can see it, it was almost six o'clock, 20 minutes to six. I was rushing to go pick a child up from daycare because the inspectors, were, I, I knew they were going to be able to hurt the children. The sixth hour, um, okay. The sixth hour, I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna share a scripture very quickly. Matthew 27 and 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. What that, that sixth hour right there, it means, um, this is what God told me the meaning. The sixth hour is the beginning of nightfall. And God is saying, and he said, that the sun is about to go down on some people's lives. This is to the people of Florida. Okay, this is the warning to the people of Florida. It's about to be nightfall for some people. And God is saying to get right with him, to give him your life today to call upon his name before it's too late. Call upon the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua, their salvation in the name of Jesus. So that is what it meant by it almost being six o'clock in my dream. That's what it meant by the sixth hour. The sun is about to go down on some people's lives. Um, the scriptures that he gave me was the parable of the 10 virgins. I don't have time to go through all of that. That's Matthew chapter 25, verse one through 13. What that has to do with was when I was in my dream and I had a light bulb, but I needed another light bulb. And I was asking the maintenance worker for another light bulb. And he told me to go to the store and get my own from where they sell them at. Um, if you read Matthew chapter 25, verse one through 13, you see that where there were the, uh, the 10 virgins, uh, five wise and, and five foolish virgins. And I'm going to try to read a, a little bit of that. It says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto 10 virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, 
but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh. Okay, very briefly, I understand that this is, uh, uh, we're taught that this is talking about um, the second coming of, of Jesus, the, the, the rapture. Um, but God gave me this in the dream. And he's saying to the people of Florida, to be ready, to have oil in your lamps. It wasn't that the five foolish virgins did not have any oil at all. They had some, but they did not have enough. Their oil in their lamps was about to run out. And so they were not prepared for what was about to come. God is saying to the people of Florida to be prepared for what is about to come. Get right with him and do it now. Okay, and I'm, I'm also going to share with you the other parable that God gave me in, in the second dream I had. And it's the parable of the lost coin. You'll find that in Luke chapter 15, verses 7 through 10. So I was sweeping, 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 and I was caught up in what I was doing. I was very involved in the sweeping. And here's what Luke says. Say, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, she does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And that's what I was doing in the dream, but I didn't realize that I was seeking for a coin. Um, and then it went on to say, and when she had found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together saying, rejoice with me for I have found the peace which I had lost. Okay. What God is saying here is when the woman was sweeping and looking for that one coin, that was a very, very valuable coin. Um, I, I read somewhere that that coin would have been worth uh, one day's wages for, for her work that she had done. Um, God is saying to the people of Florida, you're very valuable to him. You're priceless to him. He loves you. And right now God is saying that the Holy Ghost is sweeping Florida, looking for that one person, that one soul that is willing to obey his word, to take heed to this warning and turn to him right now today and give him your life. The Holy Ghost is sweeping the streets of Florida right now. He's looking for that one lost soul that will repent, that is willing to turn away from your sins. It's not worth losing your life over. Turn to God right now and call upon him before it's too late. God is saying that there is something huge. There is a, 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 a disaster about to hit Florida and he's calling you now to turn to him in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to continue to share also the part about the daycare in, in my dream. I did not understand what the whole thing was in my dream about the daycare. And it wasn't until I started recording this video that God began to open up the, the understanding, uh, the revelation, and give me the interpretation of what the daycare represented in the in the second dream that I had as I said I was trying to hurry up and pick a child up from daycare because the inspectors were going to be inspecting and they were going to harm the children um, I know I'm repeating myself but please just bear with me um, okay the daycare God says the daycare is a place where children are kept who cannot take care of themselves a place for helpless children children that need the care and supervision of an adult and God says he is the adult here today Yahweh is his name. Daycare represents a place where children, uh, where children are who cannot protect themselves from harm or danger. Without God, we are helpless children. Without a savior, we are lost. Without God, we are helpless children who are no match 
for the devil on our own. God is saying the enemy is on his way to harm the children. The enemy is on his way to harm the people of Florida. God is calling his children today. God is calling you today. Run to God, children. Run to God, children. Give him your life today. Get right with God. Get right with God right now. Tomorrow may be too late. Next week may be too late. The month of August may be too late. Time is about to run out. The sun is about to go down on someone's life. And God is the only one who can save you. He's your only hope. God is your only answer on today. Hallelujah. God is calling you to repent. Turn away from your sins. Hallelujah. Do it now. It's God who is calling you unto himself. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Okay. I've been looking over my notes. Don't want to forget anything. Um, as I continued, and uh, ever since the 11th, I've been on my face before God, praying, seeking God, crying out for the people of Florida. Um, again, I, I do want to say this. Salvation is for everyone. God wants everyone to be saved. If you see this video, if you're under the sound of my voice, um, God wants you to get right with him wherever you live, whatever state, whatever country you live, get right with God. Give him your life today. But right now, I am specifically speaking to the people of Florida. The warning right now is specifically for the people of Florida. Another thing that um, God told me as I was seeking him, I said, God, what, what, what am I supposed to do? Um, I know that I have family in Florida. Of course, I know I have to warn my family. Um, I have family and friends who are on their way to Florida. I know people who are about to travel to Florida for family reunions and, and, and various things. Um, and I know that I have to talk to them. And But I, I felt that there was something more, but I wasn't sure what my role was. And, um, uh, and this is before that God revealed to me or before God communicated to me to give the warning through social media. And uh, one of the things and one of the scriptures he led me to as I was seeking him is Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 17 through 18. Um, God says, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider ye and call for the mourning women that they may come. Send for the cunning women that they may come and let them make haste and take up a wailing for us that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with waters. God is saying, take up a wailing, call for the mourning women, for the cunning women to come quickly and take up a warning for Florida and for the people of Florida, because destruction is on its way. Also in that same chapter, verse 23 and 24, I hear God saying to the people of Florida, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. God is saying to the wise, don't be proud because you're wise. Don't glory in that. Okay? He's saying to the mighty man, to the strong, don't glory in the fact that you're strong, okay? He's saying to the rich man, don't glory in the fact that you have riches, but you need to be able to understand and to know who I am and to glory in the fact that you know me. Get right with God on today. Give him your life. And then you boast in the Lord. You boast that you know God, that you have him as your personal savior, that you're saved from a dying world on today. Hallelujah. Thank you. And the other thing that I wanted to mention that's in verse 24 of Jeremiah 9 is talking about judgment where God says that he exercises, exercises loving kindness and judgment and righteousness in the earth. Many people do not believe that God's judgment is for today. They believe that judgment day is when this world is completely over. They believe that judgment day is when we stand before God and when he tells us, well done, or when he says, depart from me, I know you not. 
And I'm here to tell you that judgment day is today. And I'm here to tell you that the judgment of the Lord has already begun in the house of God. So here it is in the scripture. He says that he exercises judgment in the earth. God is saying that he is tired of the direction that this country is going in. God has been warning and sending warnings and he's calling and he's calling people and he's warning you and he's telling us to turn away from the path of destruction that we're headed to. He's saying, turn around and come back to him. God is saying that he has laws. We think that we can do anything that we want to do and anything that we feel like doing and we won't suffer, uh, we won't suffer the consequences of breaking the laws of God. But I'm here to tell you that this country has and is breaking the laws of God and there are consequences. But God is still here today. He didn't send his son to condemn. He, this word is not to condemn you. But Jesus said he came to save you. This warning is to save your soul on today. This warning is for you to take heed and turn away from wickedness, turn away from sin and turn back to God, whoever you are and wherever you are. But I'm speaking specifically to Florida right now. The other thing that God let me know in prayer, he said, dearth in the earth dearth in the earth and I went and looked up the word dearth and dearth simply means famine lack l-a-c-k now I've been seeking the face of God every day um and as I'm as I said he when he communicated dearth in the earth to me and I went and I looked that up and I, and I said, God, I said, um, dearth, famine. The saints, we had been being warned for years now to begin to store up because something was coming. Store up your non-perishables, store up uh, bottled water. And some people have been doing that, not understanding why, not understanding what um, is about to happen. And God has let me know that when when this cataclysmic event when this nuclear tide hits florida this is going to trigger a dearth in the earth it's going to trigger a famine the world is never going to be the same there are floods upon floods in various places various states um we had a flood here where i live a, about a year ago and we had stored up non-perishables and bottled water. And we thought when the flood came, oh, this is it. This is what we've been storing up for. No, that was not it. Although we did need the bottled water. Somehow there is going to be a famine that is going to begin in the earth after this thing hits Florida. Also, I believe that what is about to happen to Florida is going to happen or be repeated on some level in other states, um, other disasters, um, destruction in other places because we're living in the last days. Florida is the beginning of things to come. I'm not here to just to put fear in you and to make you afraid. I'm here to give you a warning from God. I'm here to obey the voice of God so that you will be saved. So, as I, I've been reading through Jeremiah, and I had lost my train of thought earlier, what I was trying to say was since God revealed this to me on July 11th, I began to read all through um, as much of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah that I could. And so much of what I've been reading in the book of Jeremiah reminds me of what God is speaking to me for Florida. It reminds me of what I am seeing that is about to happen to Florida. Read through the book of Jeremiah for yourself. Also in Jeremiah chapter uh, 14 verses one through six, when I got to that chapter, I discovered, okay, here's the, the word dearth. And the dearth in Jeremiah chapter 14 at that time was a dearth of water. There was a lack of water. And so if there's a lack of water, there's also going to be a lack of food. Um, there's going to be a lack of other supplies. So that was what um, I discovered as I continued to read 
Uh, the word dearth is in scripture. It simply means famine. Um, and God is saying to store up, not just the people in Florida, wherever you are, begin to store up, store up non-perishable, store up bottled water. Also, I would like to say to the people of Florida, God did not tell me to, uh, within myself to begin to tell anybody to, to leave Florida. The warning is simply to tell you what is about to come. The warning is to turn to God and do it now. But I'm here to tell you that if God says, go, go. If God tells you to flee the city, flee the city. If God tells you to leave Florida, leave Florida, whatever he says, do you do that. Pray about what I'm telling you. Seek the face of God. Many may not believe what I'm saying, but ask God, seek him for yourself and whatever he tells you to do, do it. I know that God has people. And, and I was like, God, I know you have people in Florida who believe in you, who love you. I know God has people in Florida who serve him. I know God has messengers in Florida. I know God has prophets in Florida. So what God, what is my role in all of this? What would you have me to do? So I'm saying for God's people, or whoever that turns to him this day and seeks his face about what I'm saying to you. Hear him for yourself. And if he tells you to leave, leave. But I do want to say this, and, and I don't know, God maybe have been dealing with some people in that area in, in Florida about moving. He may have been dealing with you about going on a vacation someplace and you may not, not have understood, you know, why that was in your spirit to do it. If you feel led to do that, by all means, do it. But I'm here to tell you, wherever you go, whatever you do and whoever you are, make sure you give God your life on today. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow may be too late. We're living in the times of Amos. Amos chapter 5 and verse 19. And this is what was in my spirit all throughout this experience with what God has been talking to me about, speaking to me about Florida. Amos 5 and 19 says, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. These are the times that we're living in. What does that mean? In other words, what I'm saying is, if you don't give God your life today, if you don't get right with God, if you believe, even believe what I'm saying, you decide, oh, I'm going to pick up, I'm going to get out of here just in case. Or even if you do know God and you say, I'm going to leave Florida, I'm going to get out of here. We're leaving in the times today to where you may leave Florida and you may run to another state. And when you get there, a disaster may be about to hit that place. You may run to a different, another state and a uh, catastrophe may be on the way there. A uh, storm, a, a flood, a hurricane. Uh, we're living in the last days, people. So you may be running from danger in one place and run right back into it to another place. What is your hope? What is your assurance? What is your security? calling upon the name of Jesus, asking him to come into your heart, come into your life, giving him your life today, saying, Lord, save me. I turn away from my sin, God. Save me today, God. Show me the way on today, God. I believe you, God. I'm taking heed to your warning on today. We're living in the last days. There's disaster, destruction, tsunamis, hurricanes, calamity, uh, turmoil everywhere you turn today, every place you go all over the world. We're living in the last days. The Bible says near the end of days, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. I'm here to tell you people of Florida. I'm here to tell the world today that this is war. Florida, get right with God and do it now. Florida, get right with God right now. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to share some scriptures and I'm going to try to get through this quickly. I didn't want this to be a, a long video. I just want to make sure I get this warning out to the people of Florida, to the, anybody that you know that's on their way to Florida. This warning is also for them. But I do want to share some scriptures with you about salvation. For I know that many of you know the way. 
backsliders get right with God. People, whoever, if you've turned away from God, you may even still be sitting in the church, but you're backslidden, sitting in the church. Get right with God. Whoever you are, whether you have a title or whether you don't have a title, make sure that you're right with God on today. Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through 10 and verse 13. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, even in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Verse 13, for whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to share with you John 3, 16 through 18. And I may not read it all, but John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through Jesus, through Yeshua might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Hallelujah. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ on today. Thank you, Lord. Those are scriptures of salvation. There are other scriptures of salvation. This is an altar call on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The Holy Spirit is here to draw you today, drawing you to God on today. God is here to reconcile you unto himself today through his son, through what his son did on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for your sins and for my sins. He shed his blood. He died. He suffered. He bled. He died. And he got up on the third day with all power in his hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. And so many times, when a, when a disaster happens in a particular place, a particular state, a particular country, everybody takes to social media and it's hashtag pray for this place, hashtag pray for that place, hashtag pray for Charleston, hashtag pray for Louisiana, Louisiana, wherever. God is saying today, he's telling you, he's sending the warning in advance. God is saying hashtag play, pray for Florida now. Hashtag pray for Florida now. Hashtag call for the morning women now. Hashtag call for the cunning and the skillful women now. Come take up a wailing for Florida now. Hashtag get right with God right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I wanted to go over some scriptures um, concerning dreams and visions for people who are unlearned, for people who don't believe in dreams and visions. We even have saints that don't understand dreams and visions and, and don't believe that God is still speaking through people, uh, through dreams and visions. And I don't want to prolong the time much longer, but I really wanted to touch on some things briefly about dreams and visions. Um, it's in the New Testament. Read through the New Testament. Read the book of Jeremiah chapter 23. Um, also Genesis chapter 40, Genesis chapter 41, when God dealt with Joseph and gave Joseph interpretations of, of dreams and visions. Also in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter two, read about uh, the gift that Daniel had of, of dreams and visions and how God gave him the understanding and the interpretation of dreams and visions. But I am gonna share with you a little bit from Jeremiah chapter 23. Verse 25, God says, I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Verse 26, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name to Baal. People, I am not here today to cause you to forget God's name. I'm here to call you in remembrance of his name, of the name of his son, Jesus, Yeshua, of God's name, Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. I'm not trying to turn you away from God. I'm trying to turn you to God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Verse 28, the prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. 
And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. For what is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Let me pause right there, people, and explain that to you for those who don't understand, for those who are unlearned. When this scripture says, let him who hath a dream tell a dream, it is not talking about when you receive a dream from God. When you receive a dream from God, God is the one that gives you the understanding and the interpretation of the dream. So when God gives you the understanding and the interpretation, he's explaining to you what he's trying to communicate to you through the dream. It is God who is speaking to you through the dream. So when you have a dream from God, you also have the word of God. So it is not just merely, merely a dream as what God is warning about, about the prophets who were prophesying lies and prophesying false dreams and going around telling people, I had a dream, I had a dream and leading people astray from God, causing them to forget the name of the Lord. Those dreams that they had came from their own heart, their own deceitful heart, and from their own mind. God is not talking about when he gives his prophet a dream and when he gives his messenger a dream. A true messenger of God and a true prophet of God knows when they have a dream from God, even if they don't understand it. And they know that when they don't understand what God is showing them in a dream or a vision, that they have a responsibility to seek his face for the interpretation. Thank you, Lord. So here in verse 29, it says, is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, like a hammer that breaketh the rock. Verse 32, behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err cause my people to go astray by their lies and by their lightness. God says, yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Amen. That was in my spirit to share with people who may not believe and may not understand in dreams and visions. There are saints who go around talking about, oh, honey, you, you ate too much pizza last night. This is not a pizza dream. This is a dream from God. The only true and living God. I'm talking about the God of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. And Yahweh is his name. Also, very briefly, dreams and visions. Read 1 Samuel chapter 3. Uh, God told Samuel, and I think Samuel had that dream as a child. But God told Samuel that judgment was coming to the sons of Eli. Read 1 Kings uh, chapter 3, uh, verse, start at verse 5. It was, a it was in a dream that God told Solomon to ask what you wish. What do you want me to do for you, Solomon? God came to Solomon in a dream. He was speaking to Solomon in and through a dream. And he told Solomon to ask him, ask me, Solomon, for what you want. And that's when Solomon asked for wisdom. Amen. God speaks through dreams and visions. He did in the Bible, he did in the Old Testament, and he's still speaking through his servants. He's still speaking through his prophets and through his messengers, through dreams and visions on today. Also read, uh, I think, Acts chapter 2, and where he talks about in the last days that the, the, the old man and, and, and the young men, they were going to have dreams and visions, and he was going to prophesy. He said, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. We're in the last days, people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe I've given you everything that the Lord has given me. I'm going to end this video with the way that I started this video. Again, there is a nuclear tide on the way to the state of Florida. A nuclear tide does great disaster. Uh, it, uh, does, it, it's very destructive. I don't know how far reaching this thing is going to be. God didn't tell me that. I don't know who's going to be spared. I don't know uh, what cities or towns, if any is, anything is going to be left standing. I don't know. Again, I'm telling you, God only told me Florida. No particular region, no particular area, no particular town. Again, I saw burning. I saw ashes. This is a huge cataclysmic event. 
unlike any other that has happened ever happened before. Thank you, Lord. Lives will be lost. People get right with God. Get right with God. It's not worth it. Doing what you want to do, doing things your own way, it's not worth your life. God is here today. He wants you to spend eternity with him. It was promised to us. If you believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, if you believe upon the name Yeshua, if you call upon him on today, he's going to answer you. He's going to save your soul. If you turn away from sin, if you turn away from wickedness, he knows if you're sincere, he's going to hear your cry on today. Thank you, Lord. Don't let anybody make you think it's something complicated that you got to do. It's not complicated. The gospel is not complicated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The preaching of the cross, hallelujah, is foolishness to some, but it is the power of God unto salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I want to say thank you all for listening, for those who took the time out to listen to what I have to say. I want to ask you all to please share this video, even if you don't believe a word I said today. I'm asking you to share this video. Let the people that you share it with make up their minds for themselves. Let them seek God and pray about the things that I've said today for themselves. If you know anybody in Florida, if you have family or friends in Florida, please share this video with them today. If you know people who are on their way to Florida, please share this video with them on today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I want to obey God fully as I was in prayer. There was a song as God first started revealing to me the warning for Florida. And I'm going to sing a little bit of this song and, and I'm through. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I pray that people are making up their minds right now to go ahead and obey the voice of God. Take heed to the warning. Please, people, take this seriously. Tomorrow may be too late. Next week may be too late. Too late. I know I've said this already. Hallelujah. Next month may be too late. Next year may be too late. Too late. Get right with God and do it now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Get right with God. And do it now, get right with God, and he will show you how. Kneel down at the cross where my Savior died. Get right with God, get right, get right with God. This is an altar call. Get right with God and do it now get right with god and he will show you how kneel down at the cross where jesus shed his blood get right with god get right get right with god get right with god and do it now get right with god and he will show you how kneel down at the cross where jesus shed his blood get right with god get right get right with god get right with god do it today folks Jesus will show you how. Get right with God and he will show you how. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Get right with God. Get right, get right with God. 